Hi, welcome to this video series on road reconstruction using advanced road design. The project that we will be working on was supplied to us by local government. This is very much a typical road reconstruction project which will involve some road resheeting, replacing the existing kerb and channel, partial road reconstruction, remodelling a cul-de-sac and matching levels back into an existing intersection. As we are working on this design, we want to ensure that we are achieving suitable crossfalls and our driveways are going to work. The name of the road that we're working on is Alexandra Street. I've already created an alignment for the centre line of this road. I've also created a whole bunch of other alignments that um, I will reference. So I have an alignment for the, the new left edge of bitumen, uh, the new right edge of bitumen. I have an alignment um, over the existing uh, footpath and alignment over the existing boundaries as well. It is important when, when doing a road reconstruction project that you create alignments out of these existing features uh, because you will be able to reference those while you're working on the design. Before I create the road object for Alexandra Street, I'm just going to quickly open up the template editor and show you the, the template or the typical cross section that I'm going to apply. So. Um, uh, we've got kerb and channel on both sides, uh, footpath, some standard slope batters. Uh, at the moment, the sub base is, all, uh, is shown here, uh, running full depth across uh, each lane. Um, what I'm going to do just quickly is remove the subgrade for each of those uh, sections between the center line and LEB and center line and REB. Uh, because we're going to be inserting or creating uh, new curb and channel, I'm going to later on have full depth pavement uh, 600 mil out from the curb, and there'll be some other areas where we'll be applying full depth pavement. So if I click OK out of that cross section template, to create the road, I go to create edit road and pick on my center line alignment for Alexandra. Uh, that's the template that I, I just showed. I'll keep the, the section sampling at 10 meters and click OK. So you can see um, in plan view we've got the, the line work for the road and the vertical grading editor has opened up. At the center line of Alexandra Street what we want to do is a 50 mil overlay so I want to do a new design, uh, which is basically running 50 mil over what we uh, we currently have there. The easiest way to automate a vertical design in ARD uh, is by using this compute VC from existing data command. The tool that I'm going to use is called Match to Existing, and I'm going to tell the software for the whole length of Alexandra Street. I want to reference the natural surface, but I want to use this fitting option and it'll allow me to set a level adjustment. So at this stage, the software would, at every sample section, um, add an IP that's 50 mil above the, the natural surface. I want to smooth out this design. I can do that by specifying uh, cut and fill factors. So cut, I'm going to leave at zero but I'm going to put a factor in it of 0 0.01 <clears throat> and set a vertical curve length. So what the software is going to do here is smooth out my design within this tolerance and it's going to, uh, to do that at a 50 mil level adjustment. So if I click OK and apply an exit, <clears throat> a report will be outputted. I can close that down and I've got a design uh, running about 50 mil over the natural surface. I've got a few IPs in there at the moment. Uh, if I wanted to edit that vertical design, I could jump back in here and maybe increase that, that fill factor a little bit more. And then that'll filter out some more IPs. But this is a good starting point for my new vertical design. But as you can see in the level difference, we're about 50 mil over the natural surface there. The next thing I'm going to do is create some strings for the, the new left edge of bitumen. 
and the new right edge bitumen. So I've already created some alignments uh, for those. I head over and run the create string profile command and I'll start off by selecting the left edge of bitumen alignment. Uh, there'll be no template applied uh, to this string. Um, I will be attaching a code or setting a code on my main road to reference the offset and level on this string. The section sampling by default is 10 meters, but when you're working with strings that are parallel to your main alignment, um, you can use this option called add other strings. So the sections will align with the main road section. So I'm going to tell the software to use the sections off Alexandra Street. And if I tick on only use these changes, then it won't add in the, uh, the extra 10 meter sampling. So if I click OK and <clears throat> select OK to that, uh, the software has now created the string for the left edge of bitumen. It's put a design of best a design of best fit over the natural surface. Uh, we will have a, a play around with the the levels on these strings a little bit later on, so we can achieve suitable crossfall on our road. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing for the right hand side. So create string profile and pick on the right. Uh, edge which is uh, named REB. Once again if I pick on add other strings I can reference the sections off Alexandra Street and then create the string. So I've, although I've created the strings I need to tell the software that I want the codes on my road, uh, the LEB and the REB code, to adopt the offset and level of those strings. So if I open up a cross-section view here, um, when you open up a cross-section you can actually show extra information and what I'm going to do is run select other objects to show in cross-section view and tell the software that on all roads I want to display the alignment of LEB. and the alignment of REB. And I can also show the levels that are on that string if I use display road. So I'll just do this for REB. But what we'll see is a pink dot um, representing the level on that REB string. So on this particular cross section, uh, you can see the blue line here uh, represents the alignment of our new uh, right edge bitumen and that pink dot is the level there. So in order to set a code to adopt the offset and level of a string I need to go into the design data form for my main road and apply a variation. So if I head over to my variation uh, tools there's one in here called set code offset and or levels to string. So I'm going to tell the software, grab the REB code for the whole length. The change offset and level method will uh, grab the REB code, uh, throw it onto the alignment of the string and adopt the level on the string. And that string is REB. So if I click on add update to that, you can see that um, that code has now been pushed out onto that alignment and uh, adopting the level. I can create a copy of this variation and do exactly the same thing for the LEB and say that I want to change offset and level onto the LEB string. So if I was to open up the vertical grading of the right edge of bitumen and if I insert an IP where that cross section is one that we've got open and start moving it up and down you can see that we're now affecting the cross falls of our road. So we haven't done a design on the LEB and the REB as yet. The software has just created a, a design of best fit over the natural surface. While working on the design it'd be great to be able to see 
um, some projections from the center line shown on the vertical grading editor so that while we're working on the design we can see um, perhaps a crossfall at minus 2% and a crossfall of, of minus 5%. We could use those as, as a guide for, for the design. You can achieve this by using what we call design constraints in the software. So I'm going to open up the design data form for the REB string. Select on design constraints and add a new entry in. <clears throat> the design constraint I'm going to add uh, we'll take the design levels of the centre uh, of Alexandra Street or the Crown and project those down. So I want to project from the design levels of Alexandra Street from the position um, of the alignment. So you need to name these design constraints. I'm going to call mine CL Proj. This will occur over the entire length. Design levels will come from Alexandra Street. I want to project from the Alexandra Street alignment. You do have the option to put an additional offset or level adjustment on that. In this case, I'm not going to do so. So the crossfall I want, I'll have two, one at minus 2% and one at minus 5%. Pick the colors that I want these shown at on the vertical grading editor. Usually pinks and reds look pretty good. Um, at any time, you can turn off these design constraints if they look a bit too messy in the VGE. So if I select on Add Update and close the design data form, you'll see some bands appear. So the pink band and the red band, that's a minus 2% and minus 5% projection from the center line. If I start changing the levels of my design, you can see that when I move my design within this band here, I'm achieving between minus 2% and minus 5% crossfall. You can add more constraints, so I could also create some constraints running back from the uh, from a footpath or a boundary, and that would help me uh, determine the uh, a suitable design to cater for the. Uh, uh, level or crossfalls from the road and perhaps to, uh, to a boundary. You can automate a vertical design um, using these uh, constraints. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, once again, if I go back into the Compute VC from existing data, I could run this constraints option and it would allow me to match some IPs, design IPs down to either one of those constraints. In this example, I'm going to use the reference line tool. And what this one will allow me to do is um, pick a design level and center line alignment and project at a crossfall um, until we reach this string. So I want to take some design levels from Alexandra Street and I want to use a constant slope of minus 3% until we get to the string. And I'm going to do that the whole length and click OK. So if I select apply and exit to that, you can see what we've done here is automated a design of minus 3% from the, the center line crown. I could use this as, as a starting point for a nicer design. I could have the software smooth out this design as well. And I can do that by using this fit parameters option. And I could say well, for the whole length of this design, to smooth out and remove some IPs within this tolerance. Click OK, apply and exit. And then I've got a, a nicer design to start, to start working with. So these IPs aren't locked. I can <clears throat> delete and, and edit them and move them around. You notice as I'm moving this IP around, the software's rescaling the vertical grading editor. Um, when I'm editing some IPs or moving them around, I often use this uh, rescaling option and, and turn it off. And so when I move an IP, the vertical grading editor isn't rescaling on me. 
So that's how you can set some constraints up on the, your uh, design string for an edge and um, use those constraints to um, achieve a suitable crossfall.